Hey everyone, it's finally time to take a look at the Sega Saturn on Retroid Pocket 3. In this video I'm going to take you through all the settings you need to know and also show you a lot of gameplay of my favorite Saturn games. Before we get started you should know I'm a huge Sega Saturn fan, I always have been, but also Sega Saturn historically was very hard to develop for and that comes through in the emulation of Saturn on Retroid Pocket 3. Throughout this video, we'll be using the Yaba Senshiro 2 emulator. I'm not a huge fan of it because I don't think it's very user friendly, but again, the Saturn was hard to develop for and developing an emulator is equally as difficult. So this is just as good as it gets. Let me take you in to what I consider to be the best default starting settings. Before you play anything, you do want to extend the internal memory to eight megabytes to give yourself more room to save games. But after you check that, do not ever uncheck it or you will wipe out all your saves. Here, the new dynamic recompiler is definitely the best choice. And you can keep CPU affinity on, but I recommend turning the SH2 cache off and I'll explain more about that later. You definitely want to use the OpenGL core and I always suggest starting with frame skip off. You can turn it on if you need it for a specific game. Here you'll always want triangle using perspective correction, and I start with 2x resolution. I think many games work well that way. On Retroid Pocket 3, you'll want to turn the compute shader off, and you'll see why later. Finally, for the sound engine, you don't want legacy, you want to use the current sound engine, your ears will thank you and the performance difference is negligible. Ah, finally done with the settings overview. Let's jump into some games. First up is Astal, or Astal, I don't know. You'll notice some glitching there, but in the game it goes away. I am running this at 2x, no frame skip, it looks great. However, it's also a good time to show you why that compute shader matters. Take a look here. If you go into the options and turn it back on, you'll see that you lose all those nice foreground objects, which really help this game to stand out. So, compute shader off, looks good. You'll probably notice some small sound glitches throughout this game and others. Unfortunately, that's just how things go when emulating the Saturn. None of it is quite perfect. The game does look quite nice though, which makes sense as this was really meant to be sort of a standout way to show off the Saturn's ability at 2D graphics. Okay, a lot of games to show off. So I do want to point out, when you're exiting a game with Yava Senshiro, choose to exit, otherwise you'll probably end up having issues launching the next game. In this case, the next game is Bug. And here I've got another tip for you. If games aren't accepting input, you've probably left analog controls on. That fixes it. So, if Start doesn't do anything, turn off analog controls. Well, Bug was looking great at 2x resolution. What about Native? Yep, still good. So this game works well at native resolution of the Retroid Pocket 3, which is great. This was actually one of my first Saturn games and I never liked it that much, but now it's fun to look back at it as an interesting throwback to an early take on what a 3D platformer might be like. You'll immediately notice some glitching here, but once you push forward on the controls, eventually everything starts working right in Clockwork Night. This is another early Saturn platformer. This one more of a 2.5D affair. And it's going good at 2X. What about native? Nope. Now we definitely have some frame rate issues. 
so this game is definitely better suited for 2x resolution. Here you'll notice that changing that setting causes the soundtrack to glitch out for a moment, and then it's back. I suppose this game does have some fans, but to be honest, I always found the gameplay rather dull. So let's check out Cotton 2 because this is a game that I've seen a lot of people asking about online. It's so close to perfect at 2x, but I did see some minor slowdown, so I decided to try it at the original resolution. To be honest, it doesn't really make anything better, so I suggest running it at 2x, but you're going to have some frame rate issues no matter what. Now, Dark Savior is an interesting one, because a lot of people say it glitches a lot. I can show you exactly why, but unfortunately we have to deal with Yabus and Shiro, and how it doesn't want to really work well with front ends. Some of the settings you cannot access unless you completely exit and open the app separately. And the setting we want to check on is that SH2 cache that I mentioned. If you turn it on and you exit and you go back to your front end and you load your save state, now take a look at how glitchy this game becomes. You've got seams popping into the floor. You've got boxes on the wall that look like they're about to bounce out of the wall. But if you turn the SH2 cache off, everything works great. And I'll be honest, I love this game. I would love to do a long play of this game. I haven't played it in years. It's interesting. It involves weird time anomalies. And it's sort of a pseudo sequel to Landstalker on the Sega Genesis by the same developer. And I love that game as well. So if you haven't played this, please give it a chance. It even runs perfectly at native resolution. If you played this game back in the day, that song is iconic. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite run perfectly at native resolution. However, it does run great at 2x, or at least as great as it's ever going to, or ever did. The pop-in and the poorly faked reflection on the back window are original features. And with one huge crash, I can take us from top 10 to getting to listen to that fantastic game over. All right, the Saturn was well known for its conversions of Sega's 3D fighting games. Let's start with Fighters Mega Mix. Unfortunately, even at original resolution and with frame skip turned on, it doesn't quite run at full speed. And maybe that's not surprising because this was one of Sega's most advanced game engines on the Saturn. Fighting Viper fares a little bit better, although at 2x with frame skip, it's slow. If you set it to original resolution and frame skip, you at least do get full speed gameplay. However, if you're nostalgic for some virtual fighter, I've got good news for you. You can play it at 2x with no frame skip 
and it looks great, way better than it would have on a Saturn, and it also plays perfectly. And if you prefer your polygons texture mapped, the same holds true for Virtua Fighter Remix. In fact, it was running so well that I just had to try it at native resolution. Unfortunately, not quite. With a little more development on this emulator, maybe. Now, moving on to Virtua Fighter 2, you'll see it's running really slow here, but I want to point something out. This is at 2x resolution, and normally you would think moving up to native resolution would make it run poorer, but in fact, for this game, it doesn't. It actually runs better. And that's because this game originally ran at 704 by 480 on the Saturn, and so double that resolution is actually quite a bit higher than the Retroid Pocket 3's native resolution. And because of that, you can get close to full speed with frame skip turned on, but for best performance, you want to set it to original resolution, which thankfully is actually quite high and then you can get to full speed. Another benefit of the resolution that many Saturn games run at is that they are almost in widescreen. You notice the bars on the side are very small in this game and many of the others. Given that Virtua Fighter Kids ran on a similar engine to Virtua Fighter 2, it's no surprise that you also need to run it in original resolution with Framescape. My friends and I actually had a lot of fun playing Virtua Fighter Kids back in the day when we needed a break from Virtua Fighter 2, but it also lets me show you why you want to turn that compute shader off, because if you don't, this is what the game looks like. Finally, I couldn't end this video without showing you Nights into Dreams, one of the Saturn's most iconic games, and it plays so well on Yabba Senshiro that it makes me feel like that emulator is designed just to play this game. On Retro Pocket 3, you can play it in native resolution with no frame scale. But also, Christmas nights, because sometimes I really like this even more than the original. I wanted it so bad that even as a teenager, I imported it from Japan before they announced that we would get it in the US. And it gives me a way of showing you why we chose the settings we did, especially the one related to sound. Exit the game, be annoyed that Yaba Senshiro won't let you change this setting from inside games, go down and change the sound setting to Legacy, and then pop back over to Christmas Nights and let's have a listen. It might not be obvious at first, but just wait.
and suddenly it sounds like someone's trying to connect to the internet using a dial-up modem. So don't choose legacy sound. Now, it wouldn't be fair to finish this video without showing you some of the problems I faced. One, Duke 3D just will not load no matter which version of the game you try. Grandia has some really strange emulator related issues. It runs fine until you try to change any setting and then it chugs. In fact, even if you just go into the settings and don't change anything, it chugs. You would think if you change the resolution back, everything would be okay. But no, it chugs forever. And in fact, this game will run absolutely fine at 2x resolution on the Retroid Pocket 3, just not if you change the setting in game. You have to quit, go back into the game, load your save state, and now hey, 2x resolution and 60 frames per second, no problem. That's clearly an emulation issue. Heartbreaker for me personally is Saturn Bomberman, which I couldn't get to run at all. Tempest 2000 teases you by telling you to press start, but then once you do, it just locks up. Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter won't run at full speed, even at original resolution. And that wouldn't be so frustrating, except for these next two. X-Men Children of the Atom looks like it would play fine. The demo plays fine, but once you press start, it just locks up and goes nowhere. And of course, X-Men vs. Street Fighter also starts out fine, but once you start playing, it's going to have some absolutely terrible sound issues. And of course, because they are available, I did try different revisions of this game, thinking some of them might work better. And maybe they do, but no matter what, they all eventually end up having sound issues like this. With that legacy sound core, well, now you just get this. You can almost hear it. Ah, okay, that does it for the settings guide and gameplay for the Sega Saturn on Retroid Pocket 3. I would have loved to have spent more time with some of these games, and I bet there were at least 50 others I would love to show you, but I only have so much time. If you have any game requests or there's a game that you're having trouble getting working, let me know in the comments. I would love to do another Sega Saturn video. Also, please do like, subscribe. It means the world to me gives me motivation to keep doing these videos. I'll see you next time, and until then, keep gaming.